Hello. Let's continue our conversation. Should I do it the whole the whole video like Lord Windermere? Hello. Welcome back, everyone. Today we're going to be talking more about stoicism, innit? Um, yeah. He should make another appearance. I do a very good impression of Lord Winnemere, if I say so myself. Anyway, uh, we have ended up letters uh, in letter 40 of Seneca's Moral Letters. Um, and this is a somewhat longer letter. I don't want to read the whole thing, but I found this interesting. This is paragraph 4. Um, actually, I'll start with 3 to have a little bit of context. Believe me, then, that the copious flow of words you told me about is more suited for the lecture circuit than for someone who has serious, important work to do and to teach. It's not that I want a slow drip and dribble of words any more than I want a flood. A speaker should neither weary nor waiting ears... I'm sorry. A speaker should neither weary our waiting ears nor overwhelm them. For a meager, impoverished way of speaking makes the audience less attentive since they grow bored with a slow and halting delivery. All the same, we learn more easily from what keeps us waiting than from what goes flying past us. Besides, we say that precepts are imparted to the pupil. Running away with something is not imparting it. Moreover, speech that aims at the truth should be unaffected and plain. This popular style of speaking has nothing to do with truth. It seeks to stir the crowd, to steal upon unguarded ears and carry them by storm. It does not expose itself to scrutiny, but is off at once. How, but how can speech supply us with discipline if it is itself undisciplined? Bear in mind that this kind of speech, which is intended to bring healing to the mind, has to get deep inside us. Remedies that do not stay in the system cannot be effective. Anyway, the popular style is largely vacuous and inane, more sound than substance. I need the speech to calm my terrors, curb my temper, dispel my illusions, curtail my self-indulgence and rebuke my greed. Which of these things can be done in a hurry? What doctor cures the sick while in transit? Think of this. There is not even any pleasure... <clears throat> excuse me, to be had from such a tumult of words, hurtling on without any discrimination. In general, when something has happened that you thought was impossible, you are satisfied to learn of it a single time. So also with these people who put words through their paces. A single hearing is plenty. For what is there in such speeches that anyone would want to learn or to imitate? What judgment is one to make about the speaker's mind when his speech is disorderly, out of control, unstoppable? Just as people running downhill cannot stop where they meant to, but are carried further and they intended by the moment of the momentum of their bodies, so this rapidity of speech is not in command of itself and not well suited to philosophy. Philosophy ought to place its words, not spew them out. It should go forward one step at a time. And then he ends uh, the letter, I'm, I'm skipping uh, several uh, paragraphs here, he ends the letter by saying, the sum of all my summing up and my command is this, speak slowly. So, that was a missed opportunity. So, I think what he's trying to say here is to slow down. Slow down when you speak. And I think that is a skill that he approaches from a sort of stoic philosophical viewpoint of think before you speak. But I think in general this is a very, very important skill and this is a skill that we often forget about. And that people all over the world um, forget about. And it's not just before speaking, it's before acting as well. Hashtag the slap. Hashtag the Oscars. Um, here's what this reminded me of. I hope you'll forgive me a little bit of anecdote. But in my second year, bachelor's year, studying psychology, we had to do something called, let's say, I have to translate it, but for my Dutch friends, gesprekspraktikum but something like the conversational tutorial or conversational practical. And it was very interesting. It was a twice a week 
uh, course, ran for a term, and these were long days. These were, this was a, every seminar was nine to four, twice a week, and it was only that one course. And what we did was what professionally is called dyadic conversations. In other words, conversation between two people. With the idea that if you are a psychologist, no matter whether you become a clinician or something else, you have to be able to talk to people. You have to be able to have conversation with people. And um, <clears throat> I enjoyed it a lot. It was a small group. It was maybe maybe eight students or so. And one uh, sort of facilitator. And we did all kinds of things, which ranged from... Um, Think about the last time you had an argument with someone where you wish you would have done something different um, and now do role play and act it out and, and, and make that change. Think of how you could do that thing differently or uh, have, a, have a bad news conversation with someone. Role play that you have to give this person bad news. And it was barrels of fun. It was barrels of fun because, because I love that stuff and I like... I like to have fun with it, um, which does not mean that I was being obnoxious or belligerent, but I, if, I, if I get to role play, I will role play, man, I will role play. So I, I came up with very interesting characters. I mean, this is why I have the professor and Lord Windermere and all like the, 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 you know, that kind of stuff. To do these things, it was fun and I learned a lot. And the final assignment of that thing was to all write each other a letter, which was very interesting. So at the end, everyone had eight letters, seven from the other students plus one from the facilitator, about you and how they had perceived you. And you know, being psychologists, there were no letters that said you were an asshole. Like I mean, that that's not that's not the done thing. So all these letters were super kind, were very sweet, were very nice. And one of the things that stood out to me from one of those letters was that someone said. One thing that I valued about you, so this was about me, right? Um, um, one thing I valued about you is that you speak in a way that makes it clear that you just choose your words very carefully. You're very deliberate and measured in how you speak. And I thought that was a big compliment. And it is, it is, it is true that this is indeed what I try to do. And that's definitely not always easy um, but it matters to me when you are very deliberate in what you say then you don't find yourself saying things that you regret saying later now obviously it happens once in a while it happens you just, something just slips out and you, you know but on the whole I find it very beneficial to do choose my words carefully, to be very careful and very deliberate in how I say something. And I find that these days that also informs my teaching. I think carefully about how I wish to convey something to students so that it's hopefully as clear as possible to them, but so that it's also well thought through and they understand that effort has gone into the way I'm saying that and that that matters to me and I think it is better to not say something than to say something impulsively and I found that sometimes people find that confusing because we live in a society where you say something and then I have to say something and you say something and I have to say something but when I talk and I have a serious conversation with someone, then I speak very much the way I'm speaking now. I take breaks. I think about what it is I want to say next. And then I say that thing. And I really like that because I find it helpful. I also think that Sometimes it's perfectly acceptable, and this, these are shades of Marcus Aurelius, but to not, have, to not have an opinion about something. We are sometimes pushed into believing in our society that we have to have an opinion about everything, but that is not true. 
You always have, Marcus Aurelius, you always have the right to not have an opinion, and that's okay, right? And this extends to speaking too. You are allowed to be in a discussion and say, I have nothing to add to this. And I find sometimes that people, especially in groups, they, feel, they all ever feel the need to say, you have to say something. And I don't feel that way. I can be perfectly comfortable being in a group of people, listening to a conversation without saying anything for half an hour or an hour. And I'm not bored, but I don't have anything to add. If I don't have anything to add, why would I say something? Because then I'm talking to talk instead of talking to make a point. And that again, in my mind, that is not deliberate speech. Once you start to approach the way you speak that way, things become easier. Think about virtuous things. If you take a second to pause before you say something, you may not say that gossipy thing, which is not a virtuous thing to do to say that, but we say it anyway. But if you take a step back, you're going to say something? No, never mind. No, never mind, doesn't matter. Isn't that better? Imagine the world we would live in if politicians would always stop and think and then say something as opposed to saying the first thing that comes to their minds which they then later regret sometimes some politicians regret nothing which is even more disturbing but anyway i digress so that 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 I'm now striving to find a noun for this. That deliberateness, is that a word? I'm now doubting that. Anyway, being deliberate in what you say, I think, can have profoundly positive effects. And it can really make a difference in how you view life, but also how people view you. Which is not to say... You can never say anything back because that doesn't work either. But I think you got that point. So if you want homework, that's good homework. Next time, like the, the tomorrow or something, before you say anything, first think about what you want to say and if that, what it, if that is what you want to say and if it's worth saying that thing. That's another thing. People do it all the time. They use these strange fillers to, in conversation. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, that's true. That's fascinating. Don't do that. Don't do that for a day. See how hard that is to not fill empty space. It's really hard because we're really conditioned to do that. Oh, that's so interesting. No, it isn't. It's not interesting at all. I don't give a crap. I was supposed to say something. But then don't say that. Let's see how that affects you and how you feel about what's going on. It's pretty interesting. Anyway, that was it for today. I hope this was useful. Um, let me know what you think and what you think about deliberate speech. Um, and, and that's it. I will gladly see you next week for more talk about stoicism. Bye!